later Oxford and Sweden got their revenge touching 40 to England's 36 on Australia a much better performance on 31. This is heat number two which sees Sweden take on Australia with Henrik Gustafsson in red, Tony Rickardson in blue for Australia it is Tony Langdon in white and Craig Hodgson in yellow rank. Heat number two. On goes the green lights. A bunch around the tapes rise, the engines roar into that first turn, they just took a Gustafsson drive in there. Gustafsson goes in, looks for his partner, who's not with him at the moment. Langdon and Hoxton tied up, and all of a sudden, Tony Rickardson coming underneath. Both of them in sweet manoeuvre, just like a Rickardson move. So Gustafsson is there, and his partner has come through to join him. So Henrik Gustafsson has done all the work from the start, but Tony Rickardson, who's having one hell of a season in 1991, has come from the back to join him. Rickardson has set the world alight with the Ipswich Connell Witches in the Sun Valley Division 1, but it's surely more noted for that fabulous world final at the Unity Stadium when he captured second place on the rostrum on the night and was by far the most entertaining rider in Sweden on that occasion. But he's done the work from the back here in Heat 2. Henrik Gustafsson keeps looking over his shoulder to make sure that his partner's not in too much serious trouble, but he's really way, way in front is Henrik Gustafsson. And Sweden really have got the bit between their teeth. It's Henrik Gustafsson gets the win. Second place, Tony Rickardson. Craig Hodgson back in third place. So a maximum 5-1 heat advantage to the Swedish side. They move on to eight, and of course, Austria just on one, but a great win from the start for Henrik Gustafsson, but more importantly for his country. A good second place from the back for Tony Rickardson in heat number two. So riders coming to the line for week number three, which features Australia and England. Steve Redding rides in red, his partner in blue is Shane Bowles. For England, Martin Dugard rides in white, Joe Screen, another rider recently appeared in the under-21 world final at Coventry, scoring 10 points, finishing in fourth place. He rides in yellow. So Australia versus England, heat number three. With England on three, Sweden on eight and Australia on one point. Regling, very serious looking face as the green lights goes on. Away they go, and into that turn it is. Regling who's got there, Regling and his partner. Shane Balls have got the first and second positions at the moment, and England trailing in the wake. So it is, Australia with a bit between their teeth. Joe Screen trying to make up ground on the outside of Steve Regling, and now just to make it, his nose in front. So. Joe Screen has now come between them and now tries to come up underneath. Shane Bowles, has he's done it. Not quite, Bob's just, but just look at Screen drive underneath it. Joe Screen is now through the first place. Bowles in second place. Dilgard has come through the third, which is good news indeed for England. But can Shane Bowles hold on to second place for Australia? Rachel in now back in fourth place after taking the early lead. But Joe Screen, who's having a very, very good season with the Valview Aces in the Sun Valley Division 1, capped, of course, last Monday by that World Under 21 Championship final at Coventry, come through the pole position. Shane Ball still holding on to second place, and Martin Dugard third. But it is Joe Screen who gets a win. Second place, a very good second place for Joe, for Shane Bowles, and Martin Dugard getting third place. So a 4 to hit advantage to England, which means they now go on to seven points to Australia's three and Sweden just with their noses in front on eight points, but a good win from the back there for Joe Screen in yellow-black for England. We move swiftly on to heat number four, which sees England take on Sweden, and there we see Gary Havelock in red and Mark Law and blue, Kerry Olsen white, and Tony Olsen in yellow-black. And sadly, with Australia's injury problems, the Craig Boyce and, of course, Todd Wiltshire are depleted slightly. It's 
going to be, I feel, between Sweden and England and heat number four will have a big say in it. Here they go from the start. The first to show is Gary Havelock as he drives into that turn. Havelock leads. Jonsson tries to cut on the inside. Also on the outside, but still it is. Gary Havelock who leads. Tony Austin comes round the outside of him. Olsen now takes up all position. Olsen in yellow and black who had such a fabulous Swedish final. We saw recently here exclusively on screens board. So Olsen leads. Second place, Gary Havelock. Another man who saw on screens board win the British Championship back at Coventry in May in second place. And Per Jonsson in third place. And Mark Lauren back in fourth. So Sweden slightly is more. Oh, Gary Havelock trying to make up ground on Olsen. Olsen with the yellow and black helmet colour from the picturesque Tony Island of Gotland leads Gary Havelock with one more lap to go in heat number four. Still Per Jonsson in third place, which could be very important at the end of the day. All these minor places are going to be important as we had at the old scoreboard and after heat number 18, but it's going to be Austin who takes the win. Second place, Gary Avalon. Third place, Per Jonsson. So a 4-2 hit advantage to Sweden in heat number four. Sweden move on to 12, England 9, and Australia 3. So Tony Olsen gets a good scalp from the back in heat number four, taking Gary Havelock and a good win, I'm sure he'll be pleased with life. And Perry Johnson in third place for them, and it's a 4 2 advantage to Sweden in heat number four. Heat number five with Sweden taking on Australia. Jimmy Nielsen rides in red, his partner is Peter Nolene in blue. For Australia, Lee Adams rides in white, and Glenn Doyle rides in yellow and black. Sweden versus Australia. This is seat number five. That under Stoddard's orders. The tapes rise, and heat number five gets underway, and Jimmy Nielsen gets a delightful start from gate number one. So Nielsen leads. Adams tucked in behind him on the inside, trying to cut up the inside. Glenn Doyle in third place, along with Lee Adams, the Australians at this moment keeping Peter Norlin at bay, but Jimmy Nielsen made such a sweet gate and drove into that first turn. And Nielsen, who's had such a busy season, what with Berwick in the Sunbright League, as Nolly comes up underneath Glenn Doyle to take third spot. Rise for Berwick, as I say, back in Sweden, it's Stockholm. These races also in Poland, and at this moment in time, something in the region of about 114 meetings so far in 1991, and a very, very busy young lad indeed. Looking forward to November, he tells me, to link up again with his wife so he can reintroduce himself. And after the busy season he's had, I'm sure that's a, a true fact. So Nielsen still leaves. Lee Adams in second place. Peter Nolin through to third. So a 4 2 heat advantage at this moment to Sweden. And Nielsen coming up to take the win. Second place it is Lee Adams and third place Peter Nolin. So there we see the scores on the board. Uh, Sweden takes 16 points after heat number five. England on nine and Australia on five. And Jimmy Nielsen looking very, very sharp and crisp. Crisp in heat number five as he takes the win. Lee Adams set two points for second and Peter Nolin one point for finishing third. That's heat number five. So there we see in heat number six, Paul Thorpe giving way to David Norris, who makes his baptism in the English race jacket in white. We wish him good fortunes. 19 years of age from the Ipswich Connell Witches. Steve Redlin rides in red. Shane Bowles blue, David Norris white, Sean Wilson yellow and black. This is Hink six. Underway, they drive from the start, and here's Shane Bowles, who gets a delightful start from gate number one. Sadly, his partner, Steve Rosings, drifts terribly wide, and it's Sean Wilson and David Norris in the minor places. So Shane Bowles, and this really is to the delight of the Glasgow, Glasgow crowd here in Scotland, who will be cheering on this lad, I can assure you. And also, Jason Lyons, if he can get a ride for Australia later on in the meeting. But this moment in time, all the cheers are Shane Bowles in blue, who leads at this moment in time, heat number six, from Sean Wilson, from David Norris, and Steve Redding back in fourth place. So this is going to be a great scout for this young fella from Australia, setting the scenes alight in Division Two.
and Glasgow having a very, very... Oh, very near locks up there. The Fisher kiss of death and Sean Wilson trying to make up ground, but perhaps not close enough on that occasion. So, Shane Bowles coming round to take the flag as he's got the speed, stays out of trouble. Shane Bowles gets the win. Second place is Sean Wilson. Third place is David Norris. So, the Glasgow crowd got to give a cheer to this boy. He gets three points from eat number six. And more importantly, Australia move on to 12. And England, oh, sorry, Australia on eight, England on 12, and Sweden on 16. And look at the scores on the board after heat number six. And off Sweden on 16, made up of Jimmy Nielsen, five, Peter Nolling, two, and a bonus. Henry Gustafson, three, Tony Rickardson, two, Per Jonsson, one, and Tony Olsen on three. Sweden's total after six heats, 16. So we move on to take a look at the scoreboard of England, which reads Paul Thorpe, three points, Sean Wilson, two, Martin Dugard, one, Joe Screen, three, a good win from Joe from the back, Gary Havelock, two, Mark Loram failed to score, and David Norris, just that one outing, one and one bonus. So England, after six seats here in Glasgow, total 12 points. And the final one is Australia who currently lie on eight points. And their eight-point tally is made up of Steve Regling failed to score, Shane Bowles, well, five points out of eight, Tony Langdon failed to score, Craig Hogson, one point, Lee Adams, two, and Glenn Doyle failed to score. So Australia with some work to do, they're on eight points. So join us for more International Speedway here from the Shawfield Stadium in Glasgow after the break. Sport brings you top European motorsport every week in Go. Packed with two and four wheel action from start to finish. This week we go with motocross from Carol near Paris, the International Rally de Valigny in the Belgian Championship, and Formula Renault from Zandvoort. Friday night at 8 on Screen Sport. Here is a collection of my favorite recordings, especially for you. Star Direct proudly presents a very special collection from Richard Clayderman, especially for you. Please be ready to order by phone. Over three hours of superb music brilliantly performed by the world's most popular pianist, Richard Clayderman, including hits from stage and screen like Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, and the beautiful ballad, Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You. This very special collection you'll want to play again and again features timeless hits like I'm Not In Love and the classic Without You. On four albums, four cassettes or four compact discs, especially for you, is not available in any shops and can only be ordered by phone. Especially for you, Richard Clayderman plays modern pop classics like Ebony and Ivory and recreates magical moments with a theme from Love Story. I hope you enjoy this collection of my favorite recordings, especially for you. Order your copy by phoning your local number now. This special offer comes with a full money-back guarantee and please allow up to 21 days for delivery. And remember, especially for you, is not available in any shops. Welcome back to the Shawfield Stadium in Glasgow for heat number seven of the Internations Championship, third and decisive leg. In heat number seven, it's England versus Sweden. In red for England is Gary Havelock. In blue, his partner is Mark Loram. For Sweden, in white is Henrik Gustafsson. And in yellow rag, Tony Rickardson. Well, that pairing scored a 5-1 in their previous heat advantage, which was heat number two. And at this moment in time, 16 to Sweden, and 12 to England, and eight to Australia. And this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is heat number seven. So have a look, of course, the current British champion. He goes into gate three, his partner, Lauren, in gate one. Gustafsson in white, gate two. And Rickardson, yellow black, gate four. Up go the tapes and those engines run. Oh, Gustafsson this terribly. And the England pair have got the drop. And into that first turn is Lauren on the inside. Have a look on the outside, and all of a sudden England are back into the fray. Gustafsson tries the outside line, 
and he's going to have to pull out one of those extra special races. His Ricardo also comes into the fray. It will be surely better for Sweden to, of course, to let Gustafsson have a go, or Ricardo, but not both. Is have a lot lead still. Lorem second, Gustafsson in third place, and with two laps gone, or England going to stage one of these great comebacks? Have a lot looks over his shoulder, sees Laura Miss. Oh, lifts but brings that machine back down. Henrik Gustafsson trying desperately hard to make up ground. Here's the track, gets a little bit slick and damp, but still England hold on. Have a look, Laura Gustafsson now trying outside of. Oh, it's getting very close between Laura and Gustafsson. Gary Havelock still in pole position, but all eyes are on the minor places. Gary Havelock comes up to take the win in second place, Mark Loram, and Henrik Gustafsson back in third place. And for England's Eric Bocox, the team manager, surely that's just what the doctor ordered. And as you see by the scoreboard, England now 17, Sweden 17, after that fabulous 5-1 from Gary Havelock and Mark Loram. That's the result after heat number seven. So heat number eight sees Sweden take on Australia with Perry Jones in red and Tony Olsen in blue. Uh, <coughs> Tony, a good winner of his previous race. And for Australia, Lee Adams in white and Glenn Doyle is in yellow and black. So Lee Adams in white going into gate number four. Lee, of course, from Mildura in Australia, racing in England for the Swindon Robins down in Wiltshire, having a very, very good season. They're on averaging about half of eight and a half points in the league. There's a tape rise on heat number eight, and into that bend they drive, and Jonsson in red gets there. Adams on the outside of him, but Jonsson looks over his shoulder, sees that his partner, Tony Olsen, is not with him. So Jonsson leads. Olsen trying to make up ground on Glendale for the minor places. Glendale in yellow, Olsen in blue. Lee Adams in white behind Pierre Jonsson. So Jonsson with pole position first place. Lee Adams second, Glendale third. And at this moment in time, heat number eight is a drawn one. Can Tony Olsen have anything to say? Can Lee Adams make up ground? Having such a fabulous season, also riding in Poland in 1991. Averaging, as I was saying, eight and a half points for Swindon in the Sun Riding Division One, which is quite good for his second season in the fourth flight. Stepped up for a fee of around about 20,000 from Paul, where he spent his novice years or apprenticeship in the National League days. So around the final bends of heat number eight, Johnson still leads from Lee Adams in second place. Can't be up to take the win. It's Johnson that gets here. Second place, Lee Adams. Third place, Glenn Doyle. So heat number eight is the drawn race. Three points to Sweden, three to Australia. And it's now 20 points to Sweden, 17 to England, and 11 to Australia. But a good win there for the former world champion from Stockholm in Sweden, Perry Olsen, in heat number eight. So heat number nine, and there we see Martin Dugard, who's having another good season with the Oxford team in the Sun Rally Division 1. Failed to make it through to the World Final in 1991, but had a great scalp in 1990, reaching that uh, live broadcast from the Oxford Stadium on Screen Sport. So it's Australia in red and blue, Tony Langdon in red, his partner Craig Hodgson in blue. For England, Martin Dugard White and Joe Screen, a previous winner. He won, of course, heat number three from the back. He's in yellow and black. The engines roar, and for the takes, and the first one to show is the rider in red, which is Tony Langdon. Joe Screen taking the inside line, but Langdon's got the drop, so Tony Langdon leads for Australia. England tucked in behind him in the shape of now taking up the challenge, Martin Dugard, and Tony Langdon now is Dugard come through. Has Dugard got the pace? Joe Screen now come through from nowhere to take the lead, pushes out Langdon, and through comes Martin Dugard. So Joe Screen literally comes through from nowhere and pushed out Tony Langdon. And through come his partner, Martin Dugard. And the tactics of England and no doubt the team manager, Eric Booth, got saying, get in there and mix it. And that's just what Joe Screen done in heat number nine. And England look as though they're going to get a 5 1 to go in front again in this test match, or again, shall I say, for the first time here at Shawfield. England looking set to get their noses in front. 
And that's just what they wanted to try and capture this Intonation Championship. Joe Strain coming out to take the win. Second place, Martin Dugard. In third place is Tony Langdon. So a 5-1 heat advantage to England. Uh, for the first time in heat number nine of this third and final test, England go in front. 22 to England, 20 to Sweden, and 12 to Australia. And a good win for Joe Screen and Martin Dugard in heat number nine. So heat 10, which sees England play Sweden. Paul Thorpe rides in red, Sean Wilson blue for Sweden, Per Jonsson white, and Tony Olsen in yellow and black. And it really is getting very, very tense out there between Sweden and England. And this one could have a big bearing on the outcome of this international championship. As the green light goes on, the tapes rise and those engines roar, and Olsen gets the drop. Olsen drives into the turn. Jonsson tucked it behind him, driving around the outside. So Olsen and Jonsson. Jonsson now taking the lead on the outside, but will go very, very wide, as you see, to give Olsen bags of room behind him. Paul Thorpe tucked in in third place. Now, can Thorpe do anything as down goes Sean Wilson? Hits the deck, gets back on and remounts. So Sweden with the initiative. The seesaws of International Speedway. Is England going to fight one in heat number nine? It looks as though, with two laps gone, Sweden are going to do the viz in heat number ten. Jonsson leads. Olsen still tucked in behind him. Paul Thorpe in third place. Sadly for England, missed the drop as the tape rose. Jonsson leads. Rise, of course, for Stockholm in the Swedish Elite League, missing from England in 1991, but no doubt will be knocking on the door to come back in 1992. He comes round to take the flag. It's going to be a win for Jonsson who gets here. Tony Olsen in second place, and Paul Thorpe punching the air with disgust at missing the start in that vital lead number 10. So a 5-1 win to Sweden over England. It means now that Sweden move on to 25, England 23, and Australia 12. And that's the scoreboard after hit number 10, which sees Jonsson and Olsen get a maximum for Sweden in that particular race. So heat number 11, which sees Sweden take on Australia. Jimmy Nielsen rides in red, Peter Norlin in blue. Jason Lowndes comes in for his first ride for Australia, which to the delight is the announcer announced it here at Shawfield. He rides in white, Jan Bowles in yellow and black. And it's an all Glasgow pairing for Australia here, so something's got to give. Jimmy Nielsen in red in gate three, Peter Norlin blue in gate one. There's a lot of difference be there between Jason Lyles and Peter Norlin between gates one and two. This is seat number 11. Up go the tapes, those engines roar, and the first to show is Norlin. Oh, down goes the rider in white, Jason Lyles. Jason Lyles is down, we just wait and see what happens. The lights are on, the race has been stopped. At this moment in time, there's no exclusion light. We'll take another look at slow motion and just to see what happened there. No, uh, Jimmy Nielsen lifts, brings that machine down. Narlene goes driving in. And really, Jason Lyons had nowhere to go but bail out. And the referee, Alex McLeod, quite rightly bringing back Jason Lyons for the rerun and saying all four back. First man benching, quite rightly so. So, the restart of heat number 11 with no exclusions. The referee, quite rightly, calling them all four back. And let's see if we can get a clean and crisp start in the restart of heat number 11. 363-yard circuit here at the Shawfield Stadium. Six riders hold the track record, which stands at 65.4. Chris Louie, Andy Galvin, Mark Blackbird, Jason Lyons, Steve Lawson and Steve Redding all hold the track record. So, we now wait for the green light to go on, it does. Up for the tapes and those engines roar. Norley gets another good start from gate one. Norley leads. Jason Lyons in white cuts underneath them. So Norley leads. Lyons in second place. Nielsen back in third. And Bowles back in fourth place. But Peter Norley really made a superb start from gate number one. The cowboy from Eskil Schooner, who recently was just picked at the final stages of that Swedish final by Peter Carlson. Had to be content with second place on the day in Vetlanda. So it is Nolene that leads from Jason Lyons in second place, who's been held on by the crowd here at Glasgow. Jimmy Nielsen in third place. So this looks like being a heat advantage to Sweden 
at this moment in time is Nolene. Looks very, very smooth and compact. Having another great season in England and Sweden, but sadly at this moment in time, both his clubs look like rele little relegation looms. Eskil Stunard down in Sweden and Swindon, it's fair to say, fighting desperately hard to avoid the drop from Division One in the Sunbright League. But it's not in the gets there. Jason Lyons in second place, Jimmy Nielsen third. So a 40 heat advantage to Sweden. And Sweden move on to 29, England 23, and Australia 14. And that's the result after heat number 11, which sees Peter Lyon get a very good win indeed. So Nolene's bike packs up and he gets a good, good lift back from his teammate Jimmy Nielsen. We'll wait to see what happens to his bike there. Let's hope it's nothing too serious and he continue in tonight's meeting. So heat number 12 sees Australia take on England. Lee Adams in red, Glenn Doyle in blue, Gary Havelock white and Martin Lorham in yellow and black and that pairing for England bringing a 5-1 last time out in heat number seven, <coughs> excuse me, heat number seven. So let's see if they can repeat the dose over Australia. This is heat number 12 of this third and final test match in the International Championship. Pictures coming exclusively from the screens board. As the tapes rise and into that bend they drive and it's Lee Adams in red. Who's got the Lee Adams leads for Australia? Lee Adams coming around the outside in yellow and black is Mark Lorham. So Lorham makes a terrific drive around the outside of Lee Adams and it's got there. So Lorham leads. Second place is Lee Adams. Third place in blue is Glenn Doyle. Fourth place is Gary Havelock at this moment in time. So all eyes are on the first two as Lee Adams tries to make up ground. Still it is, the rider in yellow and black. Oh, and Lee Adams lifts Harold and goes out wide. Luckily, his partner is behind him. So it is. Mark Lorham, who's come from the back in tremendous style. A great prospect for England still with his nose in front. One more lap to go in heat number 12. Lee Adams second. Glenn Doyle third. And Gary Havelock fourth. Down the back straight for the final time. Mark Lorham with a good win if he can hold on. Lee Adams is still there, coming up to take the flag. It's just L Mark Lorham who gets there. Lee Adams with a final ditch effort has to be content with second place. So there he is, a good win for Mark Lorham in yellow and black. Lee Adams in second place, and the referee is saying exclusion for Glenn Doyle for charging. So let's have a look at the scoreboard after heat number 12. And it's Sweden on 29 points, made up of Jimmy Nielsen, six. Peter Nolene, five and a bonus. Henrik Gustafsson, four. Tony Rickardson, two and a bonus. Perry Johnson, seven. And Tony Olsen, five and one bonus. So two good pairings there. Jimmy Nielsen and Peter Nolene, and Perry Johnson and Tony Olsen. Sweden's total at heat number 12 is 29 points. We move on <coughs> to the next one, which is England. They're on 27 points, made up of Paul Thorpe, four. Sean Wilson, two. Martin Dugard, three and a bonus. Joe Screen, very entertaining, unbeaten so far on six points. Gary Havelock, amongst the thicker things, he's on six points. And Mark Lorham, what a great ride from him in heat number 12. Five and a bonus, and David Norris, just one point and one bonus from his one out. England's total, 27 points. Last, but by no means least, on 16 points are Australia. Still, I'm sure, with something to say in the last six heats here at Shawfield. Their tally after 12 heats is 16 points. And that's made up <coughs> of Steve Redding, failed to score. Shane Bowles, well, looking good after two outings, failed to score in his third ride. He's on five. Tony Langdon, one. Craig Hodgson, one. Lee Adams of Orkland scoring consistently three seconds on six points. Glenn Doyle, one. And Jason Lyons coming in for one ride, two points. Australia total, 16. So still heats, six seats to go. Join us for the conclusion after the break.
back to Shawfield for week number 13 of this Inter-Nations Championship. Third and decisive test match. England take on Sweden, and these two are the nations currently dicing for this decisive leg. Martin Dugard rides in red, Joe Screen in blue, both capable of pulling at the stops here. Henrik Gustafsson in white and Tony Rickardson in yellow and black. And this promises to be a real cracker. The green light goes on. Up go the tape, those engines roll, they drive into the first turn in the red habit colour. And Martin Dugard has got ball position. Gustafsson trying to come round the outside of him. Dugard leads, just to have Gustafsson drive round the outside of him. Can he hold on? Dugard cuts back on the inside. Oh, speedway of classic proportion. As all of a sudden, Rick Arson drives underneath Joe Screen for the minor places. So it's Dugard that leads. Gustafsson second, Rick Arson third, and Screen fourth. And Dugard, who scored a fabulous 12 points for England in the second Test match at Oxford, is in a commanding lead now. And having come from the back after it looked as though Gustafsson had got the drop on him, he kept his momentum, kept his composure, wound up in that throttle and kept the inside line, and now holds a commanding lead over Henrik Gustafsson. Tony records in his second place run the final lap as what has been a great scrap in heat number 13. Round the final two bends, and Martin Dugard, the Sussex based rider, rides for Oxford in the Summer League, is going to get the win. Dugard gets there. Second place is Henry Gustafsson. Third, Tony Rickardson. So, heat number 13 is a drawn heat. Three points to England, three to Sweden. And it's now Sweden 32, England 30, and Australia 16. And just two points between those leading two nations after heat 13. And a good win from the back for Martin Dugard in superb style. So 14, which sees Sweden take on Australia and the Australian, the Australian team manager bringing out Jason Lyons again for another ride in white. So it's Perry Johnson red, Tony Olsen blue for Sweden. White is Jason Lyons and Craig Hodgson in yellow and black for Australia. And really, can Jason Lyons do anything against the very experienced Johnson stroke Olsen pairing as a take rise on heat number 14? Away they go from the start. And it is Johnson and Olsen who've made the drop. Olsen on the inside, Johnson on the outside. And it's going to be a very, very brave man who would put any money on anybody overtaking this pairing. Just watch the class ooze out of this rider in red. And he will take the outside line and leave Tony Olsen with all the room in the world. Johnson has been in so many pairs, so many team finals, along with Jimmy Nielsen in the pairs in recent seasons. He knows just what to do, and as he spoke to us on Screen Sport in that documentary at the end of the year on his 1990 season, it's so easy to dictate a race when you're in first pace and your partner is second. You can either dictate from the inside, but he prefers to be on the outside and shield his partner, and that's just what he's doing to perfection in heat number 14. We're on the final lap, and surely five more points to Sweden in the bag, although Jason Lyons is really making his presence felt. But it's Sweden all the way as they run in the final two bends. Perry Johnson on the outside, Tony Olsen on the inside. And it's Johnson who gets there. Olsen in second place. And Jason Lyons gets third spot. So a five on heat advantage. Good news for Bo Verban, the Swedish team manager. And Johnson saying, come on, let's go around for a lap of honour. And he can blame them. They are playing to the gallery. So Sweden move on to 37 points, England on 30 and Australia on 17 points. And Jonsson and Tony Olsen getting a very, very superb team riding 5-1 in heat number 14. Heat 15, which sees Australia take on England, and Lee Adams rides in red. Glenn Doyle, who was excluded last time out, is dropped for Jason Lyons, who comes in for two on the trot. He rides in blue. For England, Paul Thorpe rides in white. Sean Wilson in the yellow. So Australia versus England. And David Norris also coming in to replace Sean Wilson, a lace replacement. So David Norris in yellow and black, so two reserves. Eric Bukoff and Neil Street ringing the changes in the later stages here at Shawfield. And England have got to pull someone out of the bag here to get back into contention. And it's Australia who made the drop. Lee Adams and Jason Lyons have got the drop over Paul Thorpe and David Norris. And the ploy is not work for England. But it certainly has for Australia, as Lee Adams sees, and his partner, 
Jason Lyons is there, and the roars from the crowd are not for England, but for Australia. And I'll try to explain to you, because Jason Lyons arrives for Glasgow in Sunbright League Division 2, and he's making his test appearance here for them. And Lee Adams is going to shield him all the way from David Norris, who's in third place, and poor old Thorpe, who's not letting life all his own way for England here at Shawfield. So Australia are going to come back into the fray, and sadly for England, we have to say, with just three more heats to go after this one, have they lost now the chance to pit the swing at the post? Is Australia are likely to take a 5-1 heat advantage in heat 15 in the shape of Jason Lyons is really going to bring the crowd to their fate and gets a win. Lee Adams chucked in behind him in second place and David Norris in third spot. So a 5-1 heat advantage to Australia who move up to 22 points. England on 31 and Sweden on 37s, 37. And although the crowd are cheering, it is for Australia. Sadly for England, have they lost now the initiative to pip Sweden for this Test match series? So we move on to heat number 16, which sees England take on Sweden. And if anything's got to happen, it's got to be a maximum heat advantage to England in this one. Martin Dew got a winner last time out, and Joe Screen already won races here at Shawfield in this Test match. They're out, Dugard's in red, Joe Screen in blue. For Sweden, Jimmy Nielsen rides in white, Peter Nolene in yellow and black. Both previous winners. So really something, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, has got to give as a tape tries on heat number 16. Up they go, the engines roar into the first bend they drive, and Joe Screen has got the drop in blue. Screen leads, Jimmy Nielsen in second place. Dugard at this moment in time is third. So Joe Screen in blue leads. Nielsen second tucked in behind him, but Dugard has got to try and get through. One lap gone. Screen leads. Looks over his shoulder. Nielsen is second. Nielsen looks over his shoulder, sees Dugard is third. And can Nolly come through to take third place? This was always going to be a battle of the wide open throttle. And it certainly is building up to be that way. Dugard goes out wide to get the dirt, and so does Nolene, and both riders make up no ground whatsoever. So Joe Screen looks over his shoulder, sees that Jimmy Nelson is behind him. So it looks at this moment, his time is up. England are going to get a heat advantage, but it's not going to be enough. Around the final two bends of heat number 16, it's going to be a win for the rider in blue, Joe Screen. It's Screen that takes the flag, second place, Nielsen. Third place is Martin Dugard. So a 4-2 heat advantage to England, which means England now move on to 35, Sweden 39 and Australia 22. And is it going to be enough? Join us for the final two rides here at Shawfield after the break. Zimbabwe and Japan from Pool 2 do battle in Belfast today at 2.45, live on Screen Sport. Screen Sport brings you top European motorsport every week in Go. Packed with two- and four-wheel action from start to finish. This week we go with motocross from Carol near Paris the International Rally de Valigny in the Belgian Championship and Formula Renault from Zandvoort. Friday night at 8 on Screen Sport. The speed from the tapes is breathtaking. The overtaking is simply stunning. The riders' bravery unquestionable. And now the Ladbrook Olympic meeting from Wolverhampton in the Midlands adds another obstacle, handicapping. From round two onwards, the previous winners start 20 metres behind the rest. Stunning speedway. Thursday night at 11.30 on Screen Sport. Screen Sport Monday. Go gets us going at six with more magnificent motorsport. The foot stays on the accelerator at seven with round 12 of the Rover GTI series. 
The pace never slackens as we stay in the UK at 7.30 for the penultimate round of the British Formula 3 Championship. From Britain to Germany for the final round of the European Rallycross Championship. That's at 8. And back to Britain at 9 for the final round of the British Touring Car Championship. Our World Cup match of the week follows at 9.30. At 10.30 we go golfing and the best of the International Open at Munich. At 11.30 there are goals galore from Spain and the American League Championship battle continues at midnight with Game 4. So the solid motorsport from 6 to 9.30. World Cup Rugby takes over. Golf gets going at 10.30. The goals go in at 11.30 and baseball pitches in at midnight. A marvellous Monday on Spoon Sport. How much do you know about rock and pop? Answer 10 questions right and you could win CDs, videos and fantastic cash prizes. The Great Rock Trivia Quiz. It's never been easier to play, it's never been easier to win. Now you can play the Great Rock Trivia Quiz in all these countries. Just call the number shown. Welcome back to Shawfield in Glasgow for the conclusion of this International Championship for the Tour Order now facing England as this very experienced pair of Sweden's Henrik Gustafsson and Tony Rickardson shortly about to bring this Nations Championship to Sweden. The opposition is Australia in the shape of Steve Regening White and Shane Bowles in yellow and black. And this is heat number 17 with 39 to Sweden, 35 to England and Australia on 22. As the green light goes on and up go the tapes on this penultimate heat and into that first turn is Gustafsson in red, Rickardson in blue, and the Australian pair are left in the wake at the moment, although yellow and black, Shane Bolt making his presence felt for Rickardson. But now it's Sweden who breeze into first and second place with one lap gone. And surely now the grip is firmly in their hands for this nation's championship. Gustafsson, who had such a fabulous 1990 season, and Rickardson, this season in 91, it looks like this pair are going to bring the bacon, although that's the wrong country, to Sweden in their quest of this International Championship. And these five points will just wrap up proceedings here at Shawfield. Gustafsson looks over his shoulder, sees that his partner is still in second place. Third is Shane Bowles, who's doing remarkably well, but on this very slick circuit now, here in Shawfield, it's the Swedes' superiority and experience that's beginning to tell. To do the wheelie, it's Gustafsson that gets a win. Second place, Tony Rickardson. So a 5-1 to Sweden means that they end up on 44 points. England, with one race to go, are still on 35. And Australia, with one heat to go, are on 23. But it's a good match-winning ride for Henrik Gustafsson and Tony Rickardson, who got a 5-1 in heat number 17 to secure the Internations Championship for Sweden. And just to play to the gallery, as he always does do, the man who's led Kumla to their second successive Swedish Elite League title, Henrik Gustafsson, is the winner of heat number 17. So heat number 18 and two changes in the Australian parent. Neil Street brings in Jason Lyons, already Tony Langdon there to replace Craig Boyce. So it's Tony Langdon in red, Jason Lyons in blue, Gary Havelock, white, and Mark Loram in yellow and black for England. This is the final heat, heat number 18 of the International Championship. And let's see if the English pair can end up with a maximum as the tapes rise. Up they go, the 500cc machines drive into that turn, and it is the blue. Jason Lyons for Australia holds pole position. And just look at Havelock drive around the outside of him. Havelock now comes through to take the lead. Gary Havelock for England. Jason Lyons in second place. Mark Lauren third. Now, can Lauren come through as well? Havelock takes a little bit of a wide line. Jason Lyons tries to make up ground, can't do it. Lauren not that far behind, but he's going to have to make a mistake, I think, by Jason Lyons for Lauren to come up, and he tries so desperately hard. You can't rest with Mark Lauren behind you. Still, Havelock leads. Lyons second. Lauren third. And Gary Havelock, who took that British Championship at Coventry back in May with so, so much superb racing and superb style, coming under pressure from Jason Lyons on the final lap. Still Havelock leads, Lyons second, Lauren third. As we go down the back straight for the final time, round the final two bends, 
and coming up to take the flag is Havanagh who just gets there in first place. Jason Lyons makes it work all the way and what a tremendous match he's had for Australia. And Martin Lauren back in third place. So 25 is the tally of Australia at the end of the night and 39 to England after heat number 18. So let's like take a look at the winner, Sweden, their total 44, Jimmy Nilsson on eight points, Peter Norlin five on the bonus, a good pairing there, but one and two for Sweden. Henrik Gustafsson nine, Tony Rickardson five and three bonus, what a great pairing there at three and four, and it gets even better, Per Jonsson ten, and Tony Olsen seven and two bonus. Total for Sweden on outright winners here at Shawfield on 44 points, and they clinch this series by two to one over England. So it was all about the really strong, experienced riders, and as you see, they all uh, got to race wins except Tony Rickardson. Perry Olsen getting three, Olsen getting one, and there they are waving to the camera. Come on, pair, small for us. Not using their reserve, Tony uh, Dennis Lofkus on this occasion, and I'm sure Bo Veravan, a very pleased man indeed. Well, England end up on 39 points, Paul Thorpe four points, Sean Wilson two, and sadly those two not doing the biz for England on this occasion. Martin Dugard, seven and one bonus. Joe Screen, nine, and doing very well, that pairing at three and four. Gary Havelock, nine, and Mark Lauren, six and a bonus. They're certainly mixing it. And David Norris coming in on his debut, getting two rides and two and one bonus. And England's total at the end of 18 heats is 39 points. So I'm sure Eric Bukoff will be quite pleased with that, although if Paul Thorpe and Sean Wilson could have just got a few more points, perhaps it would have been a different story. The last one, as always, is Australia. And they finished with, well, perhaps a depleted squad, it's fair to say, without Todd Wiltshire and without Craig Boyce. So they ended up in third position here at Shawfield. Their tally, Steve Resling failing to score. Shane Bowles, six. Tony Langdon, one. Craig Hodgson, one. Lee Adams doing the bulk of the scoring on eight. Four rides and two second places. Four second places, should I say. Glenn Doyle, one and Jason Lyons coming in as a trump card reserve on eight points. So let's have a few words with England team manager, Eric Bukok and the new boy, David Norris. You picked a very young side today. I mean, is, is there any reason for that? Well, we feel that, you know, our uh, fortune and fame this year at international level has not been very good and we've stuck with the trusted field that we've been using for a few years and obviously that's not working, so we haven't really had a lot of option. We've just had to put the youngest team I think England's ever fielded together and on today's performance, we're very pleased with it. Certainly everybody's given 100% and Sweden have probably got the best seven Swedes there is in Sweden. They are the best seven they've got and obviously very, very experienced, especially on a track so slick as this, and it just told in the first corner. Mm. But, I mean, maybe our day will come, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, the point of, of using a young side is, is, I mean, would be something apart from picking together what you've got. I mean, they, uh, you're, trying, you're working for the future, aren't you? Well, obviously, we're looking not just for today, we're looking for next year, you know, and we've got to really work hard with these kids and we've got to bring them on, you know. I mean, Kelvin, unfortunately, is not very fit. Kelvin Tatum, also probably still made a good skipper today. He's not crossed off the list. But obviously, these are the future, and why shouldn't we use them? I mean, that is the answer, you know. We've nobody else, really, so let's get them thrown in. And I think we've got to say we're very happy what we've seen today. Mm. Very happy indeed. All right. Let's turn off to turn over to a debutant then, David. I mean... You need to introduce yourself because people haven't seen you before on screen. I mean, who are you? Where do you ride for? How old are you? Oh, I ride for it sweet sweet. Well, I'm only 19. Uh, um, still pretty young, I hope. Um, you know, and hopefully in a few more years' time, you'll see my face popping up a few more times. <laughs> so where did you start? In grass track? No, junior speedway when I was eight and a half at Eastbourne, which is another policy which England have missed out on. Um, Sweden, Norway, a lot of countries have got young kids starting on small bikes, whereas me, uh, Martin Dugard started like that, but now that's all been clamped down, you see, and the Swedes and that are carrying on, and that's why they're getting a lot more young people through. You know, all right, then, we've got to keep with us youngsters, but who's after us, you know? And I think uh, in, a, in maybe a couple more years, we will start to get these uh, schoolboy training schools on the go, and then hopefully that'll be a more uh, secure future for us. Yeah. 